The problem with log cabins, I'm gonna get into that. First, I wanna say they're very charming and they have an, an appeal that has captured my heart at one time in my life. And many people, I think, have had the same exact experience. So what is the problem with log cabins? We've had firsthand experience from clients that I've dealt with. Originally, they wanted log cabins. They decided timber framing was the way to go. Why is this? Well, the biggest problem, I think by far, more than all the practicality issues and the maintenance issues and things I'm gonna talk about, the biggest issue is its inflexibility. So in other words, if you were to go to a cozy little log cabin in say, some flatlands of Tennessee, or you go to a, a big lodge up in the Rocky Mountains, both built by log cabin style, you're gonna describe it as a log cabin. A log cabin is a log cabin is a log cabin. And no matter what you do, as far as trying to get your decor to shift a certain vibe this way or that way, it's a little bit like, it's just so hard to overcome that influence that you're kind of stuck with that. It's a little bit like eating a ham sandwich every day, day after day after day. So this information we're gonna talk about, let's talk about some of the problems, and we're also gonna talk about how you can scratch that organic vibe, that log cabin itch, without getting into the problems of log, of log cabins. So, we've talked about the decor, that's the number one thing, that is, is inflexible. With log cabins, they shrink about an inch per foot and it goes over five or six years. So you need to build in such a way that your stairway is adjustable, or and there's other ways people have done it where they start tip and then it goes that way, but kind of cheesy. That's one big thing. Another is all the screw jacks on the bottom of posts that have to be adjusted maybe twice a year because as it settles, you're having to adjust it. One of the reasons is the checks log will open up and settle down as well as just shrinkage itself. And so there's a lot of just maintenance and keeping aware of things. Not the end of the world. If you love a log cabin, it's definitely surmountable. Another thing with log cabins is the, the walls round like this. There's a lot of semi-flat surfaces that catch rain. Of course, the sun gets more direct on it as well. And so there's a lot of maintenance. There's just a lot of wood there and you're not gonna paint it. Occasionally you'll see a painted log cabin, but oh, that just doesn't look good. So stain doesn't hold up as well as paint. And if you are choosing a stain color and you're weighing between this tone or that tone, choose the darker tone if as a decision breaker because the darker the pigment, the more it holds up. That's one thing we've learned as timber framers. So you've got the maintenance and then the chinking as well. Every once in a while there have to be re-chinked. And if sometimes homeowners will do it themselves and make it a family project and if they can enjoy it, great. But it can be months of work too. Putting in the foam backer and bunch of caulking. Get an electric gun if you're gonna do it. Uh, it's caulking, it's called chinking. It's, it's a special type of caulking. It goes between the logs, stops the airflow. Another thing with log cabins is their energy efficiency because the log comes down to a rather thin and then thick and there's no, the wood itself is the R value. It's not the best R value. One other problem with log cabins that you're gonna definitely want to know about. This has to do with cost. If you can imagine putting one log on top of another, full scribing, and building this log cabin like this, it's gonna take a lot of labor. Timber framing is, as is working with square material, is way more effective, way easier to work with. That being said, I would like to switch now to talk about how you can mix 
logs with timber framing to a great effect. Can I get a rustic organic vibe similar to a log cabin without becoming inflexible and without getting all of the associated problems with log cabins? So one of the easiest ways to mix this is simply just to use log posts in, in place of square posts. There's very little scribing that has to be done. Post cut off, you know, relatively easy to handle at the bottom. You have to track your, your crosshairs on the ends of the log. That's the way you work with logs. It doesn't add a boatload of time. Relatively easy to do that. You can also use square posts and round logs. Sometimes we see in one particular project, big stone columns with round logs and square timbers above. It really had a neat, warm vibe. And in this particular project, they had log siding. So on the outside of the logs, it doesn't give so much flat spots, so it doesn't connect, catch so much rain. And it's nailed to a stud wall. And the ends poke out and create a log cabin look. And that, of course, avoids all the shrinkage problems and you don't have your R value problems and you can wire the wall easily and all of these things, right? And another one that I really want to bring to you is using a log as a focal point. The post that comes down and has a big root wad that comes out, so it swoops down. Generally, a cedar log has the best swoop and they have the high ridges and whatnot. That could be like a main post inside of a big grand room and as well as entry posts or in a back patio or whatever, they can be really used to great effect that way. Another piece with logs that we've done is using reclaimed logs that come out of piers and whatnot. It maybe have some old iron poking out of them and especially with the marine beach decor, those are really cool if you use a few of them. And, and one rule of thumb I would, I would give you if you're thinking about doing this is not to overdo it. Adopt the Japanese philosophy, the way they use a taiku beam. They have very precise joinery and timber framing in Japan, but they'll throw in a, like a natural curved beam that just has two faces sawn, live edge top and bottom, and they use that in just one or two places so it really doesn't get overused and it retains its preciousness or kind of uniqueness and that, that subtle balance is something to really work at and strive for with mixing log and timbers and with general design. It's a general design principle. And then another application would be using it for stair rails or even a chair rail on, on the wall down a hallway. You could use a round, half round log to give some accent. A lot of different ways to get creative, getting that organic vibe. If you're set on a log cabin, you've maybe lived in one, you know what you're about, go for it. I do not want to dissuade you. The problems are not that big. But if you're not sure, if it's just been kind of an idea that you've warmed up to and thought about, I would say pump the brakes and check out mixing logs and timbers and you could get all the benefits we talked about and avoid those problems. Whatever it is, make sure that enjoy the journey.